Hey guys, welcome back to the MDS podcast with Eugene and I. Uh, today we have David Guillaume. He has built a almost eight figure business in the last four years and mainly in the supplement and skincare line. And he does all of his own custom formulas. David, welcome. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for being with us. And we will just want to talk about like, what did you do before Amazon? So briefly, probably when I was starting at 15 years old, I, I made my first million dollars when I was 15 years old. Um, I took a little bit of money from my parents. I learned about the stock market, about investing. Whoa, 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 whoa. you got to stop there. You made your first million dollars when you were 15? I was 15 years old. It was back then when we had the AOL dial up. Uh, it was 99, I think, or 98. Um, and then I started to just, I wanted to make money. So I went to my dad and I said, you know, how much money do you have? I think they had like $50,000 total. I said, give it to me and I'll invest it. And, uh, whatever I make half is yours, half is mine. They trusted me and, uh, me and my friend, we started to really just learn everything there was about the stock market back then investing, um, whatever we could. And I think within six months we made a million bucks. Oh my goodness. That's an yeah. amazing story. Are you kidding me? Just like that in six just, months? Just like that. The ego took over. Everybody started, my family started getting worried about me. So my uncle said, you know what? You need some spirituality. So he took me to a Kabbalah class and I was, I, I, I went reluctantly, but after my first class, I was hooked. I said, this is life changing. And um, I just went all in. I, so I, yeah. So you, you basically, you, you make a million dollars when you're 15. Yeah. You gave half of it away to your dad because he funded you. So you, this yeah. was what year? Ni 1999, 2000? 1999. Yeah. And then the market crashed and we crashed with it. So <laughs> Did you lose it all? We lost it all. And then we went back in, we made it back again. We lost again. It was a lot of back and forth. A lot of amazing lessons learned. Amazing. Yeah. So throughout that whole process, I was just immersing myself um, in spirituality, learning as much as I could, working on myself. I started to not do all the crazy things that all the people my age as teenagers would do. Um, I worked very hard. Um, I uh, went to school very hard. I graduated from UCLA when I was like 19. Um, and uh, once I graduated from college, I decided to take, instead of going to business school or law school, I decided to take a vow of poverty and I joined the spiritual organization of the Kabbalah Center and for full time I just taught Kabbalah that's pretty much what so, I've done so were, until today so you were 21 you got out of college uh you no had, no I was 19 19, you were, 19 oh, you were finished college when you were just graduated 19 yeah, so yeah, yeah I took, how did you how did you do that that quickly just I just didn't like school so I just said I'm gonna like take three times as many classes as everybody else um just to that's finish an interesting it interesting concept yeah, <laughs> and then and then at that point you're like, okay, uh, spirituality. This is what I'm going to go for, and you went. Yeah, yeah. The, the kind of fulfillment, the kind of fulfillment you get when you change. Some, first, the wisdom of Kabbalah is so powerful that as soon as you like give it to someone, like their life changes, and that was so fulfilling to me. I said, "There's nothing greater than this." Now, everybody thought I was crazy, out of my mind, like. Everybody thought like I joined like some kind of a cult or something. They had no clue like what I was doing. I said, look, this is what makes me happy. And I'm reaching like thousands of people this way. Um, and I think by the age of 23, I got to like travel the world. I, I gave 400 seminars in two years. 400 seminars in two years. Was in what's what's one of the most uh, interesting places you went to? Uh, the Philippines. I think I opened up, uh, I opened up a, a, a giant group in the Philippines. So I would travel there every six weeks and teach and we would I, I the philippines had never seen something like this before being an all catholic country and there was no spirituality um i was like voted like the, the top seven most interesting things of the year there's this like tall tall spiritual guy coming and everybody was so fascinated by it and my colleague who was also a kabbalah teacher her dad pretty much like owned the philippines owned all the tv stations owned everything so we were like all over the map it was, it was a great time uh, and uh, so how did that turn into your current business, which is Amazon? <laughs> okay. Uh, so from the age of 20 to 29, I'm just teaching Kabbalah, amazing, enjoying life, seeing the most incredible people in the world, meeting like unbelievable people, life-changing experiences. And then I find my amazing wife. 
um, when I was around 28 years old, we get married and my wife is in health and wellness. Like she's, she's like a kind of a guru about uh, everything that has to do with health. She went through some major challenges in her life. Her brother passed away. Her father passed away, both in their sleep suddenly from health challenges. Her mom gets sick and her at the age of like 24 has to figure out how to cure her mom. Learns everything there is about health. We get married and we are broke because, hey, I took a vow of poverty. I have zero dollars. Um, she lost everything from everybody passing away and crazy, crazy stuff happening. And we're broke as broke can be. Um, I never gave up my position in the Kabbalah Center, always teaching, but we said, listen, we need to make money. Um, and she said, I will help people with health. And she took on clients. She changed their lives. She charged like $4,000 a person. So it's um, like a personal, like, like, I guess yeah. diet, teaching diet and teaching like, like herbal, herbal, I guess health, like not, 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 not traditional. Well, homeopathic, she, she, right? I guess that would be, that's the word. Uh, well, I, I guess the best way to put it is she knew so many secrets about the human body and about health and wellness that she basically said, in 10 weeks, I can help you achieve anything you want. Be weight loss, skin issues, acne, sleep, whatever it was. It was so successful that I think she signed up like 100 people within the first year and, um, and people saw miracles. Like literally she saw miracles. She became tapped out, right? She would work from eight in the morning till 11 at night. Um, it was exhausting. It was crazy. Uh, and we said, wait a minute, this is not working. So then we created an online class. So uh, online class, we shot videos from our home. By the way, even though we're making a lot of money, we still had so many debts because we accrued these debts from, from her past when her family lost everything. So we still are flat broke. Um, I remember we were behind in our rent one time, six months. Uh, I said, I once asked her sitting in bed, what's your biggest fear in life? Like thinking, what is she going to say? Maybe death. Something. She's like, I'm afraid that I'll come home one day and the locks uh, will be changed. I said, why would the locks be changed? And she's like, oh, we haven't paid our rent in six months. Because she was kind of like handling the money back then. I'm like, well, I'm like, are we in that bad of a situation? So what? So, what why? Why? You were making all this money. She was making $4,000 a client. How in the world were y'all well, not I'll paying tell you. rent? I'll tell you, because when her father passed away and brother passed away, they had a $100 million a year business selling lumber. And then when the market crashed, Lehman Brothers went under. Um, everything went away, and they had their personal credit attached to everything. They went into debt millions of dollars, and their payment every month was $50,000 a month. So we had to make $50,000 a month just to break even. She, now, she didn't you, want to- You guys yeah. were the only ones in the family that took on that debt? Me, her, and her mother-in-law who she had nursed back to health. My mother-in-law who she nursed back to health, her mom. And, and y'all didn't think about filing bankruptcy or anything? So she said, we have a choice. We could file for bankruptcy, but then we would lose a giant tax credit that we have. Um, so we decided to hold on to the tax credit because we thought one day we could be successful and rich. So what happened to, you know, were you all still paying that $50,000 a yep. month? $50,000 a month. That's how long how is, that a, is that going on for? That went on for a couple of years um, until I said, we can't live like this. You're, 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 you know, we hit our limit. You know, how many more people can you meet this way? So they did the online classes. And then she said, I really want to make products. I'm like, products? No, no nothing good's going to happen from products. She's like, no, I have some great products. They don't exist in the world. We got to make them. I said, fine. Um, back then. What year uh, is this product conversation happening? This is 2014. It's 2014. 2014. Got it. So we, ch we, ch we changed the structure of our business from a services business to our product business. Give it a new name. Um, we have zero dollars, right? So we, how am I going to do this? So when I would tuck her into bed at 11 o'clock at night, I, I couldn't even sleep in the same room as her for two years because the room was so small. The bed was so small. I slept on the floor for two years after we got married. Uh, it was just very painful times. And uh, I would tuck her in. I would go sleep on the floor. And I would actually spend three to four hours every night teaching myself everything. So I taught myself design, taught myself marketing. I taught myself manufacturing. I taught myself sourcing. I would email. How are you all. teaching yourself these things? Uh, YouTube, Udemy, YouTube, Udemy, um, any video I could take, I would. Now, keep in mind, my life as a teacher of Kabbalah, I have access to the most powerful people in the world, the wealthiest people in the world, people who would do anything or 
for me if I really need it. I never wanted to utilize the resources of my other world. I, that other world was for me to just get back to. I, I said, you know what? The creator is going to help me. If I help other people, the creator is going to help me. And literally, I saw one miracle after another. I would email like 20, 30 manufacturers saying, hey, I want to make this product. I, can, I only have a couple hundred bucks. Uh, I only need 10 or 20 units. I know your minimums are 10,000. Can you help me? I emailed literally, I don't know, 50 different manufacturers. Finally, one wrote back. Where are these said, manufacturers? I'm assuming it's a supplement space. It's in the U.S., right? It's all in the U.S. and some oh, yeah. abroad. Some abroad, yeah. But supplements definitely is not something I would today um, make outside the U.S. Finally, one woman wrote back and said, we'll help you. And um, we made our first two products. I didn't even know how we're going to sell it, right? I just said, oh, let's throw some stuff on Amazon. And we created a website. So where did you, where'd you manufacture these first two? And what year was that? Uh, that was 2014. I think towards the end of 2014. And um, it was in, in the U.S. In the U.S. And you started with how much money on, on this venture? Uh, I mean, we were in debt, but I probably asked them to make me 50 bottles of vitamins and it probably cost me, you know, gosh, 800 bucks that I had to borrow. And, uh, I remember everything I was doing everything myself. I designed the website myself, built it myself, the labels, everything. And, uh, we sent those 50 bottles to Amazon and I remember like, then we told all our clients go buy it, right? All her services clients. And I remember like, so you sold out, months. it was instantly a, a sellout. No, and then... It wasn't, it was definitely not an instant sellout by the way, for some reason. Yeah. I mean, those 50 bottles our customers will buy, but we weren't getting organic sales. And I think after like a month or two, like I came on one day and we had like, we sold like seven bottles that day and me and my wife were dancing around the room that we had just made like 300 bucks today. And what we were you selling these bottles for? Just I'm wondering. $40 a bottle. $40 a bottle. Yeah. How long did it take to sell those first 50 bottles? Probably a month. And at what point did you decide that it's time to reorder? Well, I kept reordering every week, like 20 bottles. <laughs> <laughs> till today, till today, God bless this manufacturer who, I don't know why. I think, I think that's the creator at work. You know, if you believe in the creator, you believe in the universe. I, I told the creator, look, I'm still going to help people for free, mind you. I'm going to help people, but you got to help me. And that's, that's how kind of the miracles, one after another miracles came. Because sometimes I think to myself, and this is a big secret for people. If everyone did what I did, would they be successful? I'm not sure because I know people who work even harder than me, who are smarter than me. But because I devoted so much time to helping other people be successful simultaneously, I believe that energy came right back for me. And the creator said, I'm going to make sure you're successful. So one of the things I actually tell people is when you're building your own business, Anytime somebody needs something for you, be there for them. But not only that, reach out and mentor people for free without an agenda because you need that energy to grow your business. That, that's so good, man. Holy cow. That is, just keep on preaching that. And that, that, that really does come back to everybody though, for real. The more people you help, more people are going to go out of their way to help you. I was just going to say, you know, a lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to help people to just build my network, right? And I know there's a lot of people like that say, I'll always be there for you, you know, and they build their network and they get favors and whatnot. I really just believe like, I don't even want to think about what I'm going to get back from this person. I'm just going to put the energy there and it's going to come back in a more miraculous way. I don't even want to limit that energy because if you think like I'm going to give you and you're going to give me, you're limiting the energy. So I'm just going to give you. Because look, we built our business to eight figures almost, right? We're, we're going to hit eight figures hopefully this year um, with only three people. No employees, nobody else. Three, we added a fourth only last year. So I've, I've been doing customer service till like two months ago. So, so really I felt it was the, uh, only a blessing. Blessings could get us to where we got to. I, kinda, I really agree with like kind of that mindset as well. Uh, I was having lunch the other day with one of our other members, uh, Faisal, and he asked me like, an interesting question. Like, what would you fall back on? Like, if everything failed, like, what would you do? And uh, you know, I was thinking, like, the answer is, I, I my previous job was Foot Locker. You know, I never, uh, I didn't have any other, I, would, I don't have any kind of, I, I have a degree, but I don't have any experience to fall back on, really. But my answer was, I've never wronged anybody, right? So I've, I've right. this business. I've been in business for a while. I've helped a lot of people. 
and I've always delivered on what I had to deliver. So it's like I have enough people that trust me. So if I fail, I'm sure that I would have another idea. I'm sure I would have people lined up to help me. Same with like, you know, Garland, there was a line of people to help him. As long as you're you're a good person, that really does come back to you. Beautiful. And that's so, by the way, what I feel about our MDS group, because I feel like people the energy you get from the people who post or reach out to you, it's it, it's an energy that is selfless. I mean, I can't explain it. There's just an energy to it. Yeah, and I think that's what really makes our group really special, right? Because the whole group in general is there to help one another. That's how it was formed. That's how it started. And that's kind of the foundation of it. And I I mean, it, I could speak on that for hours, but man, like it's just been such a, an amazing time. So, so how has uh, MDS helped you? Oh, so this is kind of like, this is like one of my secrets to like finding a way to be successful. Whenever I want something, like I, I, there was a time I said, wait a minute, I want to join a mastermind. So I think two years into our business, I was doing everything myself. And I'm like, I heard that people are doing masterminds. And I'm like, what's that? So I, what I did is I sat in a room and I begged from the bottom of my heart. Sounds really crazy. I would pray. I would say, find me the most amazing group and guide me to the right people and don't waste my time with the wrong people. So then I went on Google and I just typed in a bunch of you know, keywords or whatever. And uh, MDS came up somehow. And I don't even know if it can come up like that today. I don't know. If it, I think it's more of an invite only thing today. But back then, I just typed it in. And, uh, you know, this group came up, MDS. And it said, oh, pay a, whatever it was, a couple thousand bucks, join the group. And I'm like, a couple thousand bucks? I said, you know, who cares? I just signed up. I paid the money. And then I joined. And within like two hours, my mind was blown. I probably made my money back within two hours. I've been part of the group now for a year. And I cannot even begin. I mean, I don't know if we're plugging in. Yes, I cannot even begin to tell you the value of this group. Um, it, it's just uncanny. So it's, it's definitely, you could definitely say that it's changed your life. Oh, changed my life. I, I use this for everything from not just business support, emotional support, clarity, certainty. The bottom line is instead of me having to like test something and fail at it and figure it out myself, I have an idea. I post it on MDS within like 30 minutes. I'm getting 30 comments, people who have tried this and failed tried this and succeeded, better ways of doing it. I've just gotten the most amazing focus group of the 250 smartest people in the world in e-commerce. For what? Like, you know, what did I even pay for that? One time I paid a couple thousand. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the point isn't to, to plug it, but everybody, you know, it was, just, it was just interesting to hear everybody's response because it, it really is interesting to hear how much it's affected everybody's business. But uh, I mean, before you joined the group, what were you at uh, revenue wise? Do you remember? I think uh, around 5 million. We're doing so five, almost I, uh, 4 in million, 4 million. So you, you oh, literally yeah. doubled in size. And did yeah, you, but I, I would, yeah, go ahead. Do you think a lot of that is due to, you know, things you've built up? What, what, how did you go? I mean, you know, you were saying that you, you were buying selling bottles of 40, dollars, 50 bottles, you sold $2,000 worth of bottles that first two years. What was really, you know, going on there? What, what helped you go from that 2000 to this point where you were at four, when you were at 4 million? What, what was, was that progression like? I, I was working really, really hard at the time. I think what MDS helped me do later was not have to work as hard um, to figure out stuff so I could actually focus my time in other ways. Also, MDS helped me be more profitable because I would spend and waste so much money testing stuff and signing up for stuff and wasting so much time and energy. And by the way, MDS also helped me not have to hire more employees because normally I'd have all these employees go out and do things and research things and figure things out, what works and doesn't work. And, you know, I would just access MDS that way. So for the first two years, it was all me doing everything. And then when I joined MDS, I realized I could just unload a lot of that. There's people there to support me. And this whole time, I guess, like in the past four years you've been doing this business, are you still, the Kabbalah, how, how much time are you spending on that versus your business? Oh, that's, what, that's what's shocking. Kabbalah is still about 90% of my day. And right now, where are you sitting? Are you sitting in the office or are you sitting at the Kabbalah Center? Sitting, sitting at the Kabbalah Center. I, I, I didn't even get to go to the office today. I, I had a phone call for 15 minutes. Um, I probably won't go to the office today, but, but, but Sunday I will. 
is your goal? I, I know your customer service policy is, is intense, but, uh, you know, luckily since you're in the space where you have those, you know, subscribers, it, it helps a lot. Uh, but I want to know more about your strategy with the whole Shopify thing. Do you plan to have your whole product line on your website along with Amazon or do you plan to have SKUs exclusive to your Shopify store? No, both will be on Amazon and Shopify. I think they're very complimentary because, um, yeah, why, why have different SKUs, right? Why, why, well, I mean, I mean, like, you know, you, you want to give the customer some, for example, you're including those sample packets. Uh, so I was thinking maybe you're including those sample packets because you want to give them samples of flavors that they would need to go to your website to buy rather than staying on the Amazon ecosystem. Because the thing is most customers that are in the Amazon ecosystem want to stay there. So it's an interesting strategy. I rather, what I've learned is anything that makes it harder for the customers, ultimately you're going to lose out on in the end. So if a customer likes ordering from Amazon and you're kind of forcing them to go to your website, uh, I think in the long run, you'll lose out on sales and profitability. Yeah, it makes sense. I guess it, you have to run it over a long period of time to really see. But I, because I, I see a lot of companies doing this and being very successful because the thing is that you are, you need to spend double the ad dollars when you, when you're just driving them to your website. If your, if your plan is to cut the spending to, uh, you know, ad dollars you're spending on Amazon and only and shift them to your website. When you start doing that, a lot of times you need to spend more because half those customers fall off the Amazon anyway. So Correct. that's kind of what you're thinking about. Correct. You're hundred percent right. We haven't tested it yet. So we don't really know what's going to happen once we start spending those ad dollars. I don't know. I really don't know. Hopefully magic. That'd be amazing. <laughs> I, I'm going to sit, I'm going to pray as hard as I can. I'm going to ask the creator to send me the right version of everything. Well, I think that's worked for you very well so far, for sure. And so, so let's talk about uh, some, some things that you're, you're best at. So what are, what are some things that you would say you're best at in your, in your, as a professional? I love connecting with people. I think it's important to be in as many events and functions as possible. I think it's good to build as many relationships as possible. I think it's good to add value as much as possible. So that for me is what I love to do. Um, I think a life changing experience was when we all went to Cancun together. I, I at first said, I'm not going. And then two days before the FOMO kicked in. Bought a I, mean, I remember you messaged me two days before and I was like, who is this guy? Yeah. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm if something strong in my heart. Told me I need to be there. And that was a huge experience. That was a huge experience. And I just got to see, really people and what they do and who they are and why they do what they do. And I think that's very valuable. And for me, products, I love developing products. I love seeing what works and doesn't work. Um, that's my main focus as of now. I can definitely say that you are a hundred percent sincere in, in how much you actually care for people, man. I mean, Thank you. there's a ton of people that will preach that all day, but you can still, you, you don't see it, feel, feel how, sincere and true they are and i can speak and attest to you completely that you are 100 percent sincere and really truly care about people thank so, you thank you so as you as you are focusing more on more products how are you launching a ton of products this year is that the next next like probably sector of your business well i think this is the big problem that everybody has because we make custom formulas our minimums are very high so um i would like to come out with a hundred more products, but uh, we've also learned not to do too much too fast. We'll probably come out with five, six products a year. We really focus on making great products and anybody who's selling on Amazon, I'm telling you right now, focus on making your products very good because you don't want to get those negative reviews. And it's very hard today to, uh, to, to get rid of those reviews. So, so how long is uh, the typical process for, for creating a new product for you? About, about three to six months of research, um, focus groups, taste tests, because we, we do liquids and gummies. So the, the taste component is huge versus pills and, and powders maybe that you blend in drinks. People don't have to worry too much about the taste. We and do. What are your so minimums? Minimums probably we're looking, I mean, average around 10,000, but sometimes we can negotiate down to five. And five that's thousand. due to the custom formulas, right? That's for custom formulas, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people doing stock formulas and private labeling, and you can get minimums of 100 bottles, which is fine. 
But once you got like 20 of the same product on Amazon, you know, you're just fighting each other. You create something unique that no one else can create. You know, you have long-term momentum that way. And uh, so how did you, I mean, in the beginning you were ordering stock formulas, right? No, in the beginning it was also a custom formula, but we just really got lucky with someone who was willing to create a custom for us with very small bottles. It was like a you very- still, a, You still work with those guys today? Till today, even though um, it makes no sense for us to really work with them, we still work with them because of what they did for us. We, we don't want to hurt them. We want them to always have business from us. But now they want 10,000 units instead of 50. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. They don't. So we, we, they're just one of the manufacturers. Um, we, we are making runs of that much with them, but we're not making new products with them. Got it. Yeah. I mean, it's a very, uh, you know, inspiring stuff there with, I, I just want to kind of know, like, you know, in, I'm assuming you, 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 you have a lot of problems in your business, just like everybody else. What's been some of the biggest problems that you had in, like this year? Scale. And like, we just hired four new customer service people and, and the training is brutal because who's training them, right? All of a sudden we didn't really think about it. Now it's me and two others, my mother-in-law and my wife training them. Scaling is always an issue for people like at our level of growth, right? Um, when do you finally let go and let somebody else do it? The first time we hired somebody, I was so skeptical, but she became such a rock star. And it was probably one of the best pieces of advice I ever got that there are people who can do things better than you, especially when they're just focused on that. And as owners, I think we think nobody can do it better than us and it's our baby and this and that. But when I first made that first hire, uh, it was till today we have her and she's just so fantastic. And we've been making similar hires like that. The other thing I would say is, hire people and you guys also have awesome strategies and you, you'll have your own take on it i i just we like to hire people who are really excited about our brand like we find people who are customers of ours we're excited about our brand and um those are so, always do you just go through best. your customer list until you find someone how did we do it i think people sometimes email us all the time hey are you looking to hire or we'll just throw it on instagram hey we're hiring message us you know so people are excited about us. They'll, they'll just start sending in their resumes. I think it's a nice way of doing it. Oh, that's, and that way the person is all about the brand and what they're, what you guys are trying to do. I Correct. mean, they're on, on, they're on board. They are for the cause of, of what your, what the whole mission is, which is awesome. I've never even, I haven't even thought about that. Throw it on Instagram, <laughs> see if anyone wants to be part of the cause. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, they already care about your products. They use your products. Why not? And you know, speaking more about that, I mean, I mean, it looks like you have your future set the Shopify and you're just going to focus on scaling, right? That, that's, I guess like your hires, is that the biggest things that you're going to be focusing on now? Hires, Shopify, yeah, scaling. Um, and the truth is I, I realized I have no clue how to now double it. Right. It's like, you never know, you never know. But what I do know is that we're going to work as hard as, we, as we've ever worked and I'm going to stay connected to great people. So I'm really also talking to people who have done this before me. I think that is so valuable. Mentors, um, I, I don't know how you can do this alone. Honestly, I have no idea how people do this alone unless they're just destined to do it. But I think that is the thing that makes me sleep well at night is knowing that I have uh, people around me that have done it before or who are doing it with me. I'm like good friends with like four of my competitors. Like we sell, like we are competitors toe to toe and we have great relationships. It's funny. Like one of my competitors just uh, entered my messenger funnel chat and uh, I knew it was him. So I started like writing to him personally and freaking him out a little bit, but it's like, it's like, you know, he's like, a really good stuff. bot at that point. Yeah. He's like, <laughs> I'm like, Hey, I'm like saying personal stuff. I'm like, Oh my God, this is amazing. It's an amazing funnel. <laughs> and then I'm like, just like laughing at him. But, uh, and I'm telling him, listen, you, you, let me just tell you what I'm doing. You know, you, 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 you know, we're kind of looking at each other's stuff, but we're also supporting each other and telling each other what to watch out for, which I think is great. Once competitors don't hurt each other, we actually grow much faster. Have you had any of your competitors come after you? Luckily, no. Luck, not that I know of anyways, right? 
Um, I mean, there is some stuff that I'm sure people are doing who are, feel threatened by us, but I haven't dealt with it as much as other people do. Like we don't really deal with hijackers. And I think that the other secret to having customized formulas that are unique, you kind of avoid the ire of your competitors because you have your own little niche, you know, and uh, people aren't going to mess with you right away. Definitely makes sense. Go after your little micro things. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like been my strategy as well. But I mean, certainly in the past four years, you've gotten a lot of knowledge of this business in general in business in general, uh, we kind of asked this question to everybody. Uh, if you had no business right now, you had all the knowledge, you have no business, you have no resources. Well, I mean, you, know, you still have, I guess, friends, family that you can talk to. Uh, and all you have is $25,000 and you were going to start over. How would you do it? I would talk to the 20 smartest people I know. I would take them to lunch or pay for their lunch, and I would make myself a student of them. I would put myself under them, and I would say, what would you do if you were me? I would aggregate the data from those 20 people. I would sit in a room, and I would just meditate and ask myself, what am I passionate about, and how can I utilize what these 20 people said and build a business? And then I would not stop until I researched the heck out of how to create my first product. I would not leave one stone unturned. I would Google everything, I would learn everything, and then I would take that product and go back to those 20 people and say, tell me why this would or would not work. Today, I mean, I just throw it on MDS, right? But I would go to these people and I would say, what <laughs> would and would not, what would and would not work. That might I cost would, you $25,000 altogether. That's uh, 20 people. <laughs> it's 40 lunches, right? 50 bucks 40 lunches, lunch. right? I have to take them to cheap, a cheap lunch. Yeah. <laughs> take um, to McDonald's. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think data, data is the most important thing that I would like to gather in the beginning. And I've learned just from asking people so many, so many questions. That's how I learn. And I would watch like 20 podcasts like this. And then... I would take it to the next step and say, okay, let's find a manufacturer. And uh, I would interview 10 different manufacturers. I would pit them against each other and say, well, who wants my business? This, that, and the other thing. And um, I would take it from there. And I would start both a Shopify and Amazon Pest. For, for those of you listening, just so you know, like, uh, you know, at first, like, I, I've seen how David phrases his questions. And uh, it, they sound silly, but they're very thorough. So he'll ask a topic and he'll ask, you know, 10, 15 questions. And I, I, I've started adopting this style when I kind of speak to people when I, when I, when I'm trying to get to the bottom of something, I, I really think it's a, it's a very smart thing to do. Uh, Cause you know, no, no, no question is really a stupid question at the end of the day. Right. 100%. To me, I, I'm very deliberate about my questions. I genuinely want to know what you guys have to say about it. Right. I think it's so stupid to be closed to anyone. And by the way, the advice I remember people would give advice and I'd be like, ah, oh, this guy, you know, I like put it aside. And then I realized six months later, I'm listening to what they're doing. The advice you don't like to hear is the advice your soul needs to hear. It's exact. It's exact. Cause there's always a force. I call it the opponent, the force that blocks you from being successful. So as soon as someone's going to help you, you're actually going to be agitated by them or you're not going to want to listen to them. That's the force basically trying to block you from being successful. So it's very important to listen to everyone. And so one more thing, now that you are here at the end, what about that debt? Did you guys take care of the debt? Are you still making those payments? No, we took care of the debt and we took care of that old debt. Um, but obviously you got to assume new debts to, to grow the company. Um, we've utilized Amazon loans. We've utilized many different things, paid them all back. But uh, I think, uh, I think it was smart. We, we try to keep our profit, our, our business always profitable. So we would never have growth pains with money, but I know a lot of people have those growing pains, a lot of people. And actually at our point now, while scaling, it's like, we have to be more conscious, um, of how we spend money and not just assume that, you know, everything's going to work out all the time, especially at this level. I think once you cross, once you're crossing that eight figure barrier for us, that's what, that's what we've noticed. Well, David, it's been a pleasure talking with you. Honestly, it's been one of the best times talking with you and, and hearing your story from, from when you were just a 15-year-old millionaire to a broke 15-year-old millionaire a couple months later. 
So you're now a very <laughs> Kabbalah <player>. rock star. <laughs> yeah. It, it, honestly, I really, I really think your story is going to inspire a lot of people. And I, I hope you continue to inspire others and really feed into other, more and more people. Cause I know you do a great job of that. And thank you for coming on here with us. Thank, thank you. you. So, uh, thank you guys so much for having me.